Hey guys, welcome back uh, to the YouTube Wars with another episode from Axis and Allies, the Garrison. I am Detroit, coming to you from my bunker here in Rochelle Park, New Jersey. So, we're covering the YouTube Wars. It is Russia's turn. Now, Russia is under the command of Dutch Lancaster, who's been performing, doing, doing a very good job, who's been performing a... a, a a series of counter-offensives that have been launched against Germany, okay? And of course, that is no different. This turn, Russia will continue its counter-offensive operations against the German Empire, okay? So sit tight, enjoy the show, and as always, let me know what you guys are thinking. I always like to hear what your thoughts are, whether you agree, disagree, or if either the Axis or the Allies should be performing other strategies uh, regarding or involving this game. All right, guys, let me know. Enjoy the show. All right, guys, so let's review the current situation on the Eastern Front for the Russian Army. As you can see, the Russians have a well-established front line. You have a North Army Group, a Central Army Group, and a Southern Army Group facing the weakly defended German positions, okay? As you can see, the Germans have forsaken the Eastern Front, knowing full well that the uh, vast majority of the victory objectives are not here uh, on the Eastern Front, but that the vast majority of the victory objectives and victory cities are actually in the Mediterranean. And that's where the uh, majority of the German and Axis and Italian forces are actually currently located. So uh, also sired, uh, Field Marshal sired blood, recognizes that the situation on the Eastern Front has become unattainable and that uh, there is no, uh, uh, that defending Leningrad at this point in time really doesn't serve any purpose. So the Germans have evacuated Leningrad and have left the city to be taken back by the Russians. Of course, let's not forget that Leningrad is a victory city, which means then the, that the our Russians will be acquiring for the Allies one victory point. Okay, so an interesting thing here, uh, a side note, this Russian uh, fleet of consisting of one submarine and one Russian cruiser uh, have really done very little for the Russian uh, war effort. Uh, these uh, The Germans did not even bother taking these uh, warships out. And uh, it's interesting to note that... Uh, these ships have really served no true purpose for the Allied war effort. Okay, so I figure that's something that I mentioned to you uh, guys uh, to think about and take a, a note of that it's not always necessary for the German or Axis powers to take out the Russian fleet if that fleet is managed properly. All right, so what did the Dutch Lancaster purchase for the Russian war effort? So, Russian... Uh, uh, the Russians purchased two strategic bombers along with one uh, T-34-86 uh, with one uh, newly uh, recruited Russian infantry with his uh, winter uh, uh, cut, uh, camel uh, uniform ready to be deployed against whoever, whether it be the Japanese or the Italians or the Germans. All right, guys, sit tight, and we'll be back uh, shortly with the order of battle.
All right, so welcome back to the order of battle. Uh, the, uh, the Russians have declared three battles. The first battle will be in Leningrad, where the Russians are moving in three infantry divisions. The second battle is taking place further south, where the Russians are attacking the territory of Bryansk. You have four infantry divisions, one uh, armored division, okay, attacking one single German armored division in Bryansk. All right, the third battle is taking place in China, where the Russians are liberating the territory of the province of Amwa, or Amwei, in uh, China. Okay, you have a total of 14 infantry divisions moving into that province, liberating it for the Chinese. All right, and of course, let's not forget that uh, uh, Leningrad uh, is also being liberated being retaken by the Russian, by the Red Army, uh, which of course is a great victory for the Allied war effort because uh, Leningrad is a victory city. So that's one additional victory point that that the Russians uh, will be acquiring for the uh, Allies. So now the Allies stand at 10, no actually not that the Allies stand, the Axis powers go down from 11 victory points they're down to 10 victory points at this stage of the game it is uh early on or the beginning still of round seven all right so then total of three battles all three battles were successful because this german tiger tank this armored division was taken out the russians lost one infantry division as well so all three battles, obviously two of the three were just walk-ins and the one where there was uh, 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 an exchange of fire, uh, each of the attacking and defending uh, uh, armies lost one unit each. each. All right, so let's come back. Uh, let's go on to the uh, non-combat movements and uh, placement of newly purchased and recruited units for the Russian army. All right, so let's go ahead with the non-combat movements. There were quite a few, and I'm just going to re uh, make a generalization and this recap. But basically, what happened was that the Russian army consolidated the vast majority of its artillery down in the Caucasus. So right now you have seven artillery in the Caucasus that were railed in, as well as one artillery division in uh, northwest Persia. The idea is to uh, protect these territories that are part of the uh, European oil uh, victory objective that we want to deny the Axis powers. Also, the Russian Air Force that was in Moscow, okay, was uh, flown or deployed to the island of Cyprus. Again, the idea is to deny the Axis powers the victory objective of the Mediterranean. Okay, so if we deny that victory objective, the Axis powers will not be able to acquire that victory point. All right, so uh, another thing that a Dutch did, Dutch made a couple of excellent moves. Amongst them are the reinforcement of the Ukraine, where he brought in those three infantry. He also brought in the industrial complex that was in Bryansk uh, into the Ukraine. Now, according to the BBR, uh, there's a special rule set that only applies to Russia and it's historically accurate because during the Second World War the Russians had the capacity to move their factories okay so at the expense of one IPC uh, Dutch Lancaster who's the Russian high com uh, supreme commander at this point in time moved his, his industrial complex from Bryansk to the Ukraine at a cost of one PC of one IPC and at the loss of uh, minus one production capacity. So this uh, industrial complex can now only produce for this turn only two IPCs. The next turn, it will be allowed to produce three units, not only two, but three. Just the exception or the reduction in production capacity only applies for this round. All right, same thing here with the industrial complex in the Caucasus. Okay, this industrial complex was in Stalingrad, in Volgograd. It also was moved south into the Caucasus at a cost of one IPC and at the loss also of one minus production. Uh, so that uh, industrial complex can also produce 
two two IPs, two uh, units at any given time. All right, so what else? Uh, Leningrad was reinforced. You now have one uh, armored division that was brought in during the non-combat movement phase from Bryansk. It is now in Leningrad. Archangel was also reinforced. The AAA was also brought in, okay, to reinforce because the Germans do have, still do have a, in a, a naval amphibious capacity where they can land in any of these territories, in Archangel, Leningrad, or Karolia. They still within their capacity, and don't forget that they also have a strategic bomber that can ferry uh, men and material into any of these Russian territories. That's food for thought and something that we have to keep in mind as the allies. All right, so where did the newly purchased units go? Okay, so the two bombers that were just purchased will be placed in Leningrad. All right, and the armored unit division and uh, infantry division will be placed in the Ukraine. Okay, so remember... This industrial complex can only allow for the production of two because two units because it was recently moved from Bryansk. All right, guys. So just as a recap to remind you, uh, the Allies have denied the Axis powers one victory city, which means then that uh, the Axis now, instead of having 11 victory points, are reduced now to 10 victory points. So making it even more difficult for the Axis powers to achieve the total victory points of 12 victory points by the end of round eight. All right, so this is the end of Dutch Lancaster's turn. Dutch, very good. I'm very impressed with uh, your movements. Uh, very well made and uh, very well played, actually. So good for you, good for the Allies and uh, uh, making it uh, even more difficult for the Axis players. All right, so now it is the Axis' turn. The Japanese go up next. The torch is on their side of the court now. They are moving next. And, of course, the Japanese are on, in command, are under the command of Generalissimo G.I. Joe, who has to make very tough decisions in the Pacific. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of uh, the YouTube Wars. As usual, let me know what your thoughts are, what your opinions are. I'm always looking forward to hearing them as, as usual, as always. All right, guys, don't forget to uh, bunker down and play. Detroit out.